Hey everybody, and welcome to another midweek Bible study here with the West Main Church of Christ. Thank you so much for taking a second to click on this video to spend some time studying the Bible with us. As always with these videos, we start with our fun thought of the day. And so because of the coronavirus, our jobs have all changed, right? It doesn't look the same uh, as it did six months ago. And so that kind of got me thinking because everybody says that my job is so much harder now than it was, or maybe you've said that, maybe you haven't. And if you work for any sort of extended period of time, you're going to end up thinking to yourself, I have a really, really, really hard job. Well, that got me thinking about what are the hardest jobs out there? Uh, and so I did some research and I found this list of the top 25 hardest jobs in the world as compiled. I think it was careerresearch.com. If you want to go look at the whole list, there's 25 of them there. But this particular list takes into account things like working conditions, stress level, salary, and even mortality rate. So here we go. You can pause this video and you want to play a little game with your, with your family sitting around. You can try to guess the top five. That's what I'm going to give you. So here we go. Top five. Number five is a lumberjack. Never really knew that this was considered a career, um, but yeah, all over the world there are actually professional lumberjacks. Um, not only is this job physically demanding, it's actually one of the most dangerous jobs that you can go into. You deal with a lot of heavy machinery. Oftentimes, you go out by yourself, and so if something were to happen, um, there's just a lot of cons to this particular job. So number five is a lumberjack. Number four is a prison worker. So if you work in a prison, you have one of the toughest jobs in the world. Um, prison workers uh, constantly report one of the highest stress levels of any kind of career, especially even within law enforcement. They have higher stress levels than what you would consider from uh, an EMT or a police officer um, working in that. On top of the incredibly high stress level, they have a relatively low salary um, for working inside of a prison. Number three, and this is one that really surprised me, number three is a mortician. It's considered to be one of the hardest jobs in the world. Not only are you dealing with death all the time, so it's an incredibly dark and depressing job, you also have very, very strenuous hours at which you work because unless you're on vacation, you're on the clock 24-7. You know, you have to be the person that's there embalming and dressing and cleaning and getting ready for this funeral. And if you get something wrong, it impacts somebody's life in a very, very serious kind of manner because you've ruined potentially, you know, the closure that a family is going to get when you deal with, uh, you know, a deceased family member. So a mortician, not one that I would have guessed. I guessed a couple of these on this list, but this was one that I did not guess at all. But a mortician is considered the three top the third hardest job uh, in the world. Number two, and I really thought this was gonna be number one, but number two is an oil rigger. Uh, somebody who works on an oil rig. It's the same as a lumberjack in the sense that you have a high stress, physically demanding job and it is considered incredibly dangerous. Uh, the reason that this is number two and not number one is because it normally takes into, it takes into account that a normal oil rig shift, what you consider your stereotypical rigger, would work six weeks on, six weeks off, and those six weeks on, all of your meals are included. So that's, I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, and the number one, the number one can, by this standard, uh, number one hardest job in the world is considered a communications tower climber. It is considered one of the deadliest jobs in the entire world because you're climbing on these towers sometimes up to 2,000 feet in the air. And the thing about being a calm tower climber is you're required to go up and climb these towers and fix them whenever they go down, which means you could be climbing 2,000 feet in the air in very inclement weather. So congratulations if you have one of those five jobs. You have one of the most difficult jobs in the world. If not, just think your job could always be a little bit worse. Again, thank you so much for tuning in and watching this video. I'm excited uh, that you decided to spend some time with us this evening. Um, we're going to continue our series. Two weeks ago, we talked about how we were starting a new series called The Church Moving Forward. Last week, we took a break, and if you haven't seen last week's video, you can check it out at our YouTube page. Ben Brinkerhoff brought us a really great lesson from the Oxford Church of Christ. He runs the uh, Rebels for Christ campus ministry down 
at the University of Mississippi. Um, but we did start talking about this brand new series about the church moving forward. And this series comes from Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. That's where Paul is writing. He says that I don't consider myself to have already obtained the goal, but he's still seeking and searching and working for it. Because as long as we're here on this earth, we haven't reached our goal as Christians. And so that's kind of where this idea comes from. If we're not moving forward, we're regressing. And we want the church to constantly be moving forward and grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Okay, so two weeks ago, we started this series by talking about bridges that needed to be gapped uh, when it comes to the church. And you have to be able to bridge those gaps and work internally before you can start moving forward. This week, we're talking about challenges the church needs to accept. So this is the church moving forward, challenges the church needs to accept. And the cool thing about the challenges that I'm going to talk about tonight is you don't have to sit there and go, well, I really would just rather avoid those because the Bible lets us know you will be given an opportunity to accept and overcome these challenges that we're going to talk about. And that's awesome. So we can constantly move forward accepting the challenges that are going to be laid ahead of us. So here we go. Number one, we have to accept the challenge of making a difference. And this seems like a really big generic kind of thing, but there are all sorts of passages throughout Scripture that require Christians to be different or to make a difference. The most popular of which comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16 which says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt should lose its taste, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Not only are these two things noticeable, salt and light, they make a huge difference when you need them. Okay, I can't remember the last time that I had a green bean that was unsalted, Okay, or really any kind of vegetable for that matter that was unsalted. When you're in an incredibly dark room and you're seeking to find something, you need that light to be there. And the cool thing about this is, is that no matter how old or young you are, what your talents are, what abilities you have, you can use those to make a difference. Not just to yourself, not just to your congregation, but to your entire community and society around you. Being different, understanding that there's something better out there and that's what we represent. Of course it's going to be hard. Nobody says it's going to be easy. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58 says, Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, be steadfast and immovable, always excelling in the Lord's work, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Okay. Nobody said it was going to be easy. We just know that it's worth it. And I'll say that again toward the end of this lesson because it's absolutely true. But we have to accept the challenge of making a difference if the church wants to move forward. And then number two, we have to accept the challenge of training biblical leaders. Leaders are not made by accident. Okay, They're not people that grow up just naturally being an excellent leader. John Maxwell said this, the single biggest way to impact an organization is to focus on leadership development. There is almost no limit to the potential of an organization that recruits good people, raises them up as leaders, and get this, continually develops them. And then, of course, you can look to Scripture and you find verses like 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2, which says, What you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who may teach others also. The church is an incredible organization because, unlike most modern businesses, there is absolutely no limit to the talent pool that we can ask for. We have those with life experience in all sorts of different situations. We have those that are eager and excited to be put to work. All the church has to do is be willing to teach and be willing to be taught. And it doesn't matter if you're in middle school, a teenager, or in your mid-40s or 50s. The church has to continue to promote leadership. The church cannot move forward in any capacity with a lack of leadership. And again, nobody promises this is going to be easy. I'm sure all of you, myself included, understand what it's work, understand what it's like to work with somebody who's stubborn who simply doesn't want to learn, who wants to be in charge but doesn't want to take advice or look to others for help. 
the church has to accept that challenge and be sure that we are preparing ourselves for as long as we're here to move forward with the best leadership that we possibly can. Nobody promises that it's going to be easy. All we're promised by God is that it'll be worth it. Because at the end of this life, when we're spending an eternity in heaven, we're going to be glad that we put in the work now. So the challenge for us is accepting those challenges. That in and of itself is a challenge. Not shying away from it, not avoiding the opportunity, but being willing to step up and understand that the church moving forward has to accept those challenges. Before we go, I have just a few announcements for my West Main family. Um, as always, I say this every single week, but it still remains to be so important. Stay in touch with each other. Connect with each other, phone, text, cards, uh, do a drive-by visit, wave at somebody. Um, it is so important that we stay in touch with each other. And we were all really, really good about it the first few weeks. Maybe at this point, we keep dragging on longer and longer and longer. We're getting ready for school. Everything's getting hectic, um, but we still have to stay in touch with each other. Always remember to stay uh, looking at our Facebook page for our Sunday night and Wednesday night updates. Uh, we will be out there at 7, weather permitting on Wednesday nights and Sunday nights. We encourage you to come out and participate in that with us as well. Um, it's on our Facebook Live if you can't make it out here, so please be sure to do that. Uh, remember this particular Sunday, upcoming uh, July the 26th, we have our re-recognition of our seniors where we'll present them with their Bibles. Uh, that should be a special moment for them. Uh, and as always, remember that if you need anything at all, please be sure to give me a call or carry or one of our deacons or elders. Uh, you need anything, whether it's uh, running errands or prayers, be sure to reach out to somebody. Thank you guys again for watching this video. Uh, we love you, and we'll see you soon.